Oh boy, we got you two here. Look out. Are you, are you trying to convert them to the whole smart you power thing? You He's know it. it. <laughs> oh brother, what are we talking about today? So we're talking about smart panels, but it all starts with a typical electrical panel, right? We all have these in our houses. We do, right? and, we, and we have forever, right? These things have not changed in like 100 years. Not really, they all still kind of have the same functionality they have for I don't know how many years now. Right, okay. So that's the old. And so this is the new. All okay. right, let me see what Whoa, look at that. So this is called a smart panel, right? And it's providing us with load management. Okay? okay, so if you look at it, you have six relays here, six relays here. This controls up to 12 circuits. Are these additional circuits? No, the circuits from here are fed through this and then to the load. Gotcha, so okay, so not additional. Gotcha. Not additional, exactly. These have the ability to measure what you're actually using at each load. So you can see on your app, on the phone, you can see exactly how much power is flowing to every one of those loads. Okay. And you can turn them on or off. That control part has oh, been missing. Yeah, so we've always had the ability to sort of monitor. Right. But now you're telling me that I can control. That's right. So why would I want to turn something on or off with this complexity here? Right, so when we go to systems like backup power systems, right? So if you talk about generators, we talk about solar with battery solutions, what they call energy storage systems. Mm -hmm. In that case, you can't run all your loads all at the exact same time. You might stall the generator, or you might deplete the battery too fast. Gotcha. So Heath, when we've installed backup generators, um, and it's not been big enough to power the whole house, sure. you guys have had to sort of pick five or six critical circuits wire them over to another box and say, when the generator kicks in, yeah. that box is controlled, everything else goes dark. Exactly, the old school was putting in a small generator panel that's specific to those circuits. You'd pick those, you'd turn the generator on, that was it. A lot of times now we're actually doing a whole house transfer switch, so we're transferring the entire panel or, the, or all the power going to the property. So you can run everything, but you still have to be aware on your end of what's available. So you kind of have to be selective about what you run and don't run based on the generator or battery size. This kind of solves that for you. So this lets us be selective? That's right. So on a manual basis, you can go to your phone, you can turn loads on or off, but you can also do it automatically through a priority schedule. So you can have the critical loads that you want to make sure always have power, yep. then the things you'd like to have, and then the things you don't care really much about, non-critical and non-essential loads. So let's make sure that I've got some basic lights on, let's make sure that I can keep uh, the Wi-Fi going, right. the heat going. Refrigerator. Refrigerator, yeah. that's yeah. critical. Critical. Yeah. I'd love for uh, the stove to operate, but I don't need it necessarily. That's in the next band. That's right. And yeah. this thing will determine whether or not there's enough power. Right, so it's constantly looking at what's the generator capacity at. It's also looking at what the battery storage is, is at. And I presume I can change my mind and, and reconfigure that at any time because it's all via the phone. That's right, you can schedule however you want. And where it really gets cool is when you get into time of use rates you know, with electrical structures. You know, the, the utility companies are billing us differently now than ever before. Right, so that's the idea that everyone comes home at the same time at night, demand surges, the utility is overwhelmed, so they like some people to lay down, lay off so they charge a higher rate that's between right. six and nine or whatever. That's right. Now we can play with that? That's right. So now we can say, hey, it might be time to run on the battery versus running on the utility grid power during those peak events. Save a couple bucks. Exactly right. Very nice. All right. And so in terms of saving a couple bucks, what does this thing cost? One of these runs about $2,000 for the unit itself plus installation. And, and what is installation? What's entailed with installation? Yeah. So this one can install either in a flush mount panel like this, and this, this is the way it comes configured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes with the flexible metal conduit with all the conductors inside of it already, so you simply dig the hole, pop that conductor in. Right. Yep. Cool. And you can add as many of these as you need, right? So if you want to do 24 circuits or 36 circuits, you can it's modular. You can bank these together. Just daisy chain them together and pick up all these. And yep. if your panel were in the basement or were surface mounted, they make a kit that goes with that as well. So you can pretty much install it anywhere. That's news I can use. I like it. Okay. Um, it's not all in one panel, though. So it is a little bit of a bolt-on as opposed to an integrated solution. Sure. Do we have integrated solutions these days? We do. You've got, do we have? You've got one right behind you. <laughs> Look at you guys. Dr. Frankenstein's with all your bulbs and stuff. What is this? So if you're doing a new installation or you're doing a panel replacement or an upgrade and you know you're probably going to have solar or battery, something like this is the way to go. So all of the smarts that are over there are included in here? Those are already kind of built into the background of this panel. So this panel wires like a conventional panel would. You'd still bring utility power in, you'd have your battery down here, your solar over here, and your regular loads like the kitchen lights, the refrigerator, etc. Wires conventionally but it also has all of the smart technology behind it built in and done ready to go. Same functionality, so I can measure. Mm. Right, so you can pull it up on the app uh, real electric time. dryer, refrigerator, HVAC, and kitchen lights, kitchen lights, yep. refrigerator, all those. All those are active right now, oh, right, we're on utility power. kilowatts, 1200 kilowatts, oh, okay, yeah, yep. gotcha. All right, but we can kill utility power, and on the fly, it can drop out those non-essential loads we talked about. So if yep. this were to get shut off right here, 
Can I shut it off? Absolutely. This is not gonna, you guys aren't gonna kill me, are you? <laughs> so this is a power outage. That's a power outage. And Ooh, there it is. Ooh, because you so, told it, just turn that off. So that's a non-critical load. It takes about a half a second for it to shed those loads. With being on battery, you have what, roughly a 20 to 30 millisecond yeah, transfer time, so you don't really notice lights blink, clocks don't go out. So it's a pretty, pretty seamless transfer. Right, so you can see on the app oh. that the load dropped out, right? Zero. The electric dryer dropped out. Gotcha. Right? And, but the rest of the loads are active. So in this situation, um, if I'm in this configuration with those on and the electric dryer off, is that thing smart enough to tell me, hey, you got extra capacity, and could I physically go and put the electric dryer back on from my phone? Absolutely. Yep. Really? So go to the app, you can turn it on manually, you can bring it to a priority load and you can move it up in terms of that you know, the scheduling. Yeah. Um, you, and it could also be smart enough to say, hey, I want it to run when the battery is above, let's say, 50% capacity. I want to bring those loads that I'd like to have, I want to actually make them, you know, come on. Yeah, gotcha. you get real-time information the whole time, so you know how much battery life has left, what you're really using, you can choose what you want to run. What does this cost? A unit like this runs around 3500 I think, plus installation. Plus installation, yeah. okay. So it sounds like a big number. It does sound but like a big I've number. Once I've got this and this, solar and battery, right. in my house, i got a lot of hardware going. You're right? already making a big investment. When you're putting in solar, when you're putting in the battery backup system, that's a lot of money you've already spent. You might as well optimize it the best you can with something like this and really make it worth your while. So rather than maximizing the system, optimize the system. Right. I mean, you could add more solar, you can add more battery storage, or we can consume the loads more effectively, right, and mm. consume less. Mm. So it's a balancing act, mm. right? And so yeah. if you want to put on the right amount of solar and the right battery storage at a very good value and you want to optimize your load consumption, this is the way to do it. Is this the future? I think this is definitely the future. We've been doing more and more houses that are going to be having the solar and the battery in them. It just makes sense. Keith, it was a loaded question. If you're hanging out with this guy, <laughs> this is your future, pal. <laughs> He's going to push this stuff on uh, you. He's already got me. <laughs> Good information, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Powering up. Power back up. Turn it on. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.